7 o'clock, and I will call this meeting to order. Maybe I have roll call, please. Oh, we're muted. All right. Can everyone hear us now? <laughs> I can hear you. All right. Perfect. Uh, the time is now 7.01, and I will call this meeting to order. May we have roll call, please? Mayor Reichel? Here. Pro Tem Hanrahan? Here. Trustee Brettinall? Here. Trustee Klassen? Here. Trustee Flores? Here. Trustee Poston? Here. Trustee Siebert? Here. Uh, may we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence, please. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, be seated. <clears throat> Uh, the first item on tonight's agenda is public comments. Uh, persons desiring to make a public comment on items not on the agenda, please activate the raised hand function in the meeting program. Are you for public comments? Did you sign in? Okay, can you sign in real quick for us, please? While she shine, signs in, do we have any phone calls or emails, Sheila, in regards to non-agenda items? No, I did not hear from anyone today, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I do not show any raised hands. All right. Thank you very much. <clears throat> right. Yep. Come on up. Yeah. Right. If you could just state your name and address for the record and then. Um, hi, I'm Amy Goodwin. Um, I live at 131 North 5th Street here in Silt. I've been a Silt resident for a couple minutes. <laughs> Um, I'm here to talk about this skate park and I guess just, just some general upkeep of the town. Um, skate park and around that area, I'm sure you guys have all been there, but the, around the skate park particularly is really riddled with some goat heads. So I'm wondering if maybe some, some yard maintenance around there, the weeds are high. The weeds are high in, in different areas where I think the town should be or is supposed to be taking care of stuff like that. But the goat heads are a particular problem. And they go all the way along the soccer field right there where the old Roy Moore School was. That, that whole area is just really riddled. And then they, those seeds come home to places they shouldn't be. <laughs> so could we do something to get rid of them? I'm willing to be a part of the, the solution, FYI. Okay. And then I don't know, I know that the um, Dollar General is not a problem that silt can actually deal with, but the litter around the Dollar General is outrageous. It's out of control. We need to do something about that. If there's some way that you guys could um, apply pressure to the Dollar General or something to that manner, I don't know. I've gone over there, I've picked up trash, and it's redundant. And it, and so something needs to be done. Because as I watch the new Dollar Tree, I think it is, being built, I feel very sad, not only that the wetlands were destroyed, but that we have got such a problem with the trash. We need to work on that. Goat heads, trash, and that's it. Okay. Any questions? Nope. Nope. Thank Thanks you for coming in. in. And Thank you. Our public works director is here, so he'll He's making notes. heard your comments and making notes. So. All right. And I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, you know, <clears throat> All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks, Thank Amy. You. Thanks, Amy. Have a good night. Yeah, Thanks you for guys have a good in. night, too. Yes. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Ma'am, did you come in for public comment? Or Okay. Great. So we have one for public comment. Public comment. Okay. Here. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, then we will move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the consent agenda, which contains the minutes of the August 28th 2023 Board of Trustees meeting. Would anyone like to discuss those minutes or make a motion? Mr. Mayor, make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll second. All right. Uh, motion by Trustee Seifert to approve the consent agenda as presented, seconded by Trustee Clausen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Uh, do any board members have any conflicts of interest with agenda items tonight? Oh, here, Mr. Mayor. No. I have none either. Are you going to do your pre 
presentation. Uh, any agenda changes by staff or the board? Yep. Okay. Yep. No, sir. Resolutions at the end. No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Staff. Mr. Lehman, does staff have any agenda changes? No. Okay. Thank All you. All right. Yep. <clears throat> awesome. Uh, the n item next on the agenda then is the announcements of the Discover Silt photo contest winners, and I will turn this over to Mrs. Centeno. Yes. Um, I forgot my paper because I was carrying all this in here. Mm -hmm. Sheila, did you have the names on there too? I do not. Oh, well, I take that back. I do. Let's okay. see. Right there. Perfect. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. Do we have Taylor Smith? Perfect. And then do we have Penny or Cindy here tonight? All righty. So we are presenting the first prize um, for the photo contest that Discover Silt did. And we are going to let our mayor make the presentation here. This is the prize that was won. Okay. So Taylor, if you want to come up. Okay. Come on up. We very much appreciate you coming out or you take pictures. <laughs> yourself a mirror Yay. some kind of thing taped to it that I'm not something sure what it is yep <laughs> and then there is a $30 so the mirror is from Whimsical Wagon there's a $30 gift card to Whimsical Wagon um, Misty's or Wild Coffee donated two $50 gift cards and then there are car wash gift cards in there as well and awesome. so I wasn't sure if you wanted to give us a little bit of history or background on your picture and sure um, well I moved to Salt Lake three years ago <laughs> and, um, and then he came along <laughs> um, but that's just a walk that we would go on every day and I do photography as a side job and um, I thought it was just a really beautiful shot that you can see up from the mesa there and I actually printed it for his bedroom because um, I wanted to like have a bunch of images of local places that he could actually go visit when he's old enough to remember. So I thought it would be a good photo for his bedroom too. So That's a great just idea. It's a walk that we go on every once in a while, and I think a lot of us see this view all the time from our neighborhood. So. Yes. Well, it's a beautiful picture. We appreciate you participating. Yeah, thank you for participating. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for coming. coming in. In. Yeah. And you can stay for the water plant conversation. He looks at the sale. You know, so far I'm not doing very well. That's zero for five. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right, and thank you to all the businesses that participated and gave gave prizes for that contest. And um, we are a little bit ahead of schedule, so if anyone else shows up for that, we might jump in and present them with their prizes too. So. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So there may be some agenda changes, impromptu. I'll leave those. The next item on the agenda is the planning and zoning commission interview with. Uh, Vanessa Westmoreland sure. and I will turn this over to uh, Clerk McIntyre. Thank you Mr. Mayor. So we had the recent resignation of Joelle Dorsey and we put this out on our law, all of our uh, areas of communication to get the word out that we had the opening and we did receive this application from Vanessa and she's here tonight for an interview and hopefully an appointment. All right. Would you like to jump up to the table, the hot seat? We'll hold up. Okay. Okay. All right. Do you just want to start by telling us about yourself a little bit? I really hate that question. <laughs> so, um, I've lived in Silt. I think I moved here in 2020. Um, that's a lie. It was 2021 because we finally got to take our masks off. Um, I've been in Newcastle since 2015, and I've been a Colorado resident my whole life, except for two years when I moved to Arizona because there was a blizzard and I had a tantrum. <laughs> um, other than that, I don't think I could ever leave this state. This is my home, it always has been, and I never really want to leave Silk because it's so tiny and it's a great community. Everybody knows everybody and everybody helps everybody 
All right. Uh, do any board members have questions? I guess I have one. Is there anything in particular, one thing that sticks out that you would like to address once you get on P and Z? Is there anything you'd you see that you'd like to see changed or <laughs> the way things are done or? I think I want to learn how things are done first before I okay. decide anything like that. Um, like I'm an avid learner and I want to learn everything. I'm the type of person that would take a side job just to learn how people do it because I think it's kind of cool. Um, I've also been in college most of my adult life, um, just earning degrees because I like learning things. So I would want to learn first. Okay. Right. Trustee Clawson. I have a question. Um, and I'm only asking this just because on, on the uh, application, there was three questions that were left unanswered. So what do you think the town's responsibility is in overseeing and regulating residential and commercial development? Can I read that one too at the same time? Yeah, it's uh, number, sure. number eight there. Okay, yeah. what do you think the town's responsibility in overseeing and regulating? I think that question is missing a word in there. What do you sit down? is in overseeing okay i see it now um i don't think i really understood that question very well uh, was it for a tr a, if they were reappointed is it under that um yeah I no it says questions for planning and zoning and board of trustee candidates only okay okay, okay. so maybe i did misunderstand it. um <clears throat> I don't think I understand the question, to be honest, totally honest. I get what it's trying to say. I don't get how I should answer it. I guess, you know, so, okay, so regulating residential and commercial development, mm -hmm. I guess basically what direction or responsibility, how far do you think the town should go in regulating like residential <clears throat> development like, you know, like, apartment okay. buildings and so forth like that? So you're saying like where should the town's responsibility end? In a way. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, I think that's completely up to a lot of people around here too because everybody's different. Um, Personally, I think this town could use a little bit more commercial than residential. But um, again, that's something that I would need to learn more about. And I think that being able to listen to people and find out what other people want in the town too is a big responsibility of the town. They need to find out what everybody else wants and not just what the people who sit on the board want. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, okay. thank you. <laughs> okay. With that being said, Vanessa, mm -hmm. how do you feel about um, reemphasizing code that has been written and when you guys are reviewing planning for future projects? And um, what was the first part of that? How do I feel about it? Yes, like oh. code that has been already written and they. And going over it? Going over There is a lot of that. Um, within the planning and zoning, yeah. just going back to the book. And I've, I've seen that box about this thing, <laughs> very heavy, lots of codes that have been written there. Sometimes yeah. it happens that we happen to review the code, but planning and zoning gets to work with that document already. Mm -hmm. So I, I see where you're coming from um, when we are hearing uh, the population and um, what they need to do, but there is a lot of that work that, that is already there that has been built and that's being used by the planning zone to make those decisions. So how do you feel about uh, those plans and codes that have been already written and making decisions based on that? Um, well, I think everything should be looked at just to see how it is, but the, there's also a lot of changes that need to happen too because this town is growing kind of fast. And so like I guess that people wrote them for a reason, but times change. And so sometimes you have to go back and relook at things and, and rework them for the present and for the future, as well as for the past. I 
think I answered that. Yeah, I just okay. wanted your feel of like what? Okay. How do you feel you're about it? Kind of looking so, at me blankly like I nope, didn't I just quite answer it all the way. I'm that. sorry. <laughs> you're fine. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I have a quick one. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's a quick one. Do you have any individual concerns about development direction that you plan to bring to the table? I know you said in your initial comments that you were planning to learn, but you have, mm -hmm. or listen, mm -hmm. but you have some personal motivations as a resident. You've already mm -hmm. referred to them. Are there any particular areas that motivated you to join, to try and join P&Z? Mm. So the first thing that got me interested in silk government was the chickens, which I think you and I talked about. Um, so, and then that brought me to my first town meeting, which was the water plant. And then that really got me going. And um, so then that's when I started looking at all the other stuff that's been going on in silt and, and thinking like, you know, since it is such a small town, maybe one person can come in and learn and try to make a difference. Great. <clears throat> okay. Any further questions? Mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned when Chris asked you this question about more commercial mm -hmm. development. Are you, I mean, do you see commercial development as mom and pop businesses or Walmart? I like local, personally. I do like local. I do know the benefit and see the benefit of big corporations and how they can help out, but I do lean more towards local um, businesses. businesses. Okay. Uh, and do you have a specific I guess sector of commercial businesses that you feel need to be that would benefit the citizens I guess because I, I would assume that you want the the growth or the commercial growth to benefit the people of, yeah of, so is there a certain sector of commercial business that you think silt is lacking just off the top of my head is food I know there's the little tiny store and then there's the dollar store and then there's the gas stations but I don't know, like I looked in my refrigerator this morning and I didn't have milk or eggs and I have to go all the way to Newcastle for that. So I think food is kind of a lacking part okay. of silt. All right. Um, and then I guess, what was it about the chickens that first got you interested in <laughs> silt government? My son is obsessed with birds and he wanted chickens so bad and so when I found out we could only have three chickens I thought that was kind of weird because I come from Denver I was born and raised in Denver and you're allowed eight chickens in Denver and I thought why would a big city allow eight chickens and a farming community only allow three chickens so then I tried to find out why that was and I talked to several different people about it um, until I met Derek and then he kind of Help me on my way there. Okay. I gave her a homework assignment and she killed it. She sent me an email like a week later with what every neighboring town has as their chicken policy. <laughs> like <laughs> that. I was nice. like, wow, okay. Yeah. Like, okay. It's going to be a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> <laughs> like, curiosity is one thing, but follow through is another. Yeah. And I think that relates to PNZ's work is, is doing the homework, <laughs> you know, when these yeah. developers are sitting down doing the prep to be ready and, yeah. and you demonstrated that yeah um, the other point that I do like that, that she made is is to learn first it's hard to expect anyone to come into a board position ready to hit the ground running there is a a learning learning curve as everyone sitting up here knows that I'm still uh, on it that you yeah. you have to <laughs> learn and, and people that are willing to admit that you know out the gate kind of you know makes me feel better about that I'm just going to charge in here and, and take care of everything um, that attitude of learning first so yeah I think that uh, that's a great trait for a PNZ commissioner to have to actually learn the facts know the code before making a personal decision and um, without the facts you know what actually can happen 
So any follow-up questions or would someone like to make a motion? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, make a motion to appoint Vanessa Westmoreland to the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. Second. All right. Uh, motion by Trustee Seifert to appoint Vanessa Westmoreland to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Second by Mayor Pro Tem Handrahan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations and thank you for applying. Thank you. Look forward to working with you. And Sheila will get a hold of you and get you all the information you need to, to move forward. Okay, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Look forward to working with you. All right, next up is the uh, recordation of the final plat for Autumn Ridge subdivision, and I will turn this over to Attorney Sawyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> uh, this is, I think, what should be a pretty quick item. So the board will recall that uh, several months ago we approved a final plat for uh, Autumn Ridge subdivision. It uh, segments that property into two lots. Uh, there really are no public improvements associated with this because the improvements to those two lots are already in place. Um, under the town code, the, we are under the town code. We put signature blocks onto every plat for three different utility companies to sign uh, prior to a plat being recorded. Um, I will tell you that Silt is the only community that I am aware of that does that. Uh, in most other communities, uh, utility companies are referral agencies. That is to say they get notice of a uh, application. They have an opportunity to comment on the application. Often that input is then reflected in terms and conditions or perhaps information on a plat. Um, that, that gets implemented at the time that the subdivision is, uh, uh, is finalized, but that, that a utility company is not required to sign the plat and certainly doesn't have the ability to hold up an approval of this board by refusing to sign the plat. In this instance, uh, XL Energy is refusing to sign the Autumn Ridge plat. Uh, and the reason, and, and Derek Walter is here, and he, he's the one who's had communications with Excel, so he, he may be able to provide you a little bit more information, but uh, it appears that they have concerns with the fact that on the western boundary of this subdivision, there are two easements that overlap each other. There's an Excel easement, and the town has uh, an easement created by that plat that uh, uh, overlaps the Excel easement. To my knowledge, there's no current conflict between those uh, easements coexisting. And in fact, very frequently on plats, we have multiple easements that are uh, recorded in a single location. And so uh, Derek contacted me, uh, explained this issue, and uh, you know, my, my take on it is, is that this board approved the subdivision and just because XL doesn't want to sign a plat is not a reason that we should withhold uh, finalization of that process and the recordation of the plat. And so the purpose of bringing this to your attention is uh, to get your hopeful approval that we can move forward with uh, recording the plat with XL's signature. Uh, that is staff's recommendation. And uh, I, I would invite Derek to come up and he might have a few words uh, to <laughs> uh, impart here and certainly can answer any questions about his efforts with Excel and how we ended up where, where we were at. Thank you, thanks Mike. Mike covered it pretty well. Um, we've been working through getting our improvements done and then it came time as we we're wrapping everything up to get all the, the plat finalized, print the mylars and get the signatures and everything was going fantastic until I sent the plat to Excel Energy and Sam Wakefield down there in the rifle branch there. And she took a look at it and said, wait a minute, our easement's on top of the silt easement. So you're telling me if I sign this document that I can't use my easement anymore. And I said, well, I don't know if, that, if that's how I would interpret it, but you have an easement. It doesn't necessarily say you're taking it away, but it does say you can't put anything in the town's easement. 
So it's like a blanket of things happening on top of each other. Excel does not like it. I asked her, well, haven't you signed this before? And she said, I probably have, was her answer. And I'm almost positive she's had to have, or someone from Excel has, because you have lots of subdivisions in town that have been approved since then. But I think the distinguishing factor here is that before they were always looking at it as a piece of land that there were going to be easements put onto the property for them. In this case, they had an easement on the property and that became the problem. Town's easement, their easement, and the, that certification says they can't use that the way that they read the language. So we're in a conundrum here as the landowner where we can't make them sign a plat and we're in a, a municipal code situation where you put it into your, someone put it into your code um, prior, probably prior to all of you being on the board and it's not really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I guess I would know, you know, whatever Excel's rights are, they, you know, they have a, an easement in that location that predates the, the plat and the granting of the town, the easement, you know, arguably they continue to have rights under that easement that they can exercise and at a minimum they would want to come or would need to come to the town to talk about co-location of improvements at that at that space but we can't control excel giving or withholding uh, a signature and i don't think we want to set a precedent that a single utility company has the ability to sidetrack uh, a subdivision approved by this board so is there any legal ramifications of going ahead that can come back to bite us later? I mean, just I, I mean, again, at some point, Excel may come in and, and request to put something in that space, at which point the town staff would need to work with Excel to figure out how to co-locate those things together. They don't have anything in that location currently? They do. Okay. There's an overhead power line that runs kind of over, almost over oh, the property yeah. line and then their easement is offset on each side of, it. side of it. And then the town has a water line that's probably about seven feet inside the property. It's a 15 foot easement you have on that side that it's running through. So there's not a physical conflict in there. The two structures already exist. exist. The only thing that could happen in the future is maybe they want to underground what they have, which they could do that where the power poles are located or you know, well away from where the, your water line's located at. Or they could put it on the other side of the fence. <coughs> They have easement on that side as well. How far does the power line have to be buried next to a water line? We would want at least five to ten feet, just so if we had to dig the water line, we didn't have to worry with their power line. But we have conflicts like that over town where we've buried electric, and it's not that far off of water lines. You just hope the water line doesn't break, and you don't have to dig it. And how far are the poles from the water line? Currently, they're probably about seven, seven and a half feet. Yeah. So those room to underground it in that easement and keep them far enough away that if we dig on the water line, we're not going to have to mess with the electric line if they underground it. <coughs> Do we have anything else that needs to go that may may go through there or needs to go through there? Not. Or no, you're not that I can think of at the moment. We've got plenty of wastewater lines running and this is a 12 inch no an 8 inch water main yeah it, it just it, ties into grand for another loop it's also a very system. sorry it's a very specific easement it's a water line easement not general utility easement yeah yeah but there isn't any scenario where the town would say no you guys can't put anything here i mean it's already existing right yeah, the water lines already exist. Well, I mean that the power. Oh line. yeah, the there power isn't lines any scenario. already existing overhead. Okay, where the town would say no, you can't put your stuff here. To okay, so we 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 may we may tell them they need to move it an acceptable distance away from the water line, but they have an easement there, and you know we would need to find a way to co-locate. You both have yeah. an easement still without being right on top of it. <clears throat> So it sounds like their biggest gripe is they might they they feel like they might be losing their easement. They don't they're not really concerned about location of their power line. Um, but that's not the case. They're not losing an easement. No, their 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 easement is of record. It's shown on it's the plat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just overlapping, correct? They're just overlapping easements, yep. that's right. right. 
Well, I don't like the fact that, yeah, some utility company could, you know, like you said, veto what we're trying to do. I mean, I, I think that should be, you know, taken out of the town's code. We, we, we have, admi at the staff level, we've talked about removing that from, from the code. We, I mean, I'm sure there was a reason it was put in, but again, I'm not aware of any other community that does this. And, and utilities are always included in the referral process so that their input can be factored into the subdivision design and on the plot. Yes, the, their referral is important. I'm not trying to say it's not. I just don't necessarily like the fact that if you know they don't sign it, then it doesn't. What, what do we do? Well, we come to you and ask <laughs> for your permission to record the plot without their signature. Does but this, we, we, we just don't see a reason to continue to do that. Is this the first time a utility has said no? Since my, since I've been the town attorney, yeah. I can't recall another instance of this no, other ever it. coming up, so. I mean, I'm fine with going ahead and recording the plot without Excel. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Did the um, concrete or trail issue get taken care of that they had to readjust? Wasn't that an issue? That yeah, they've repaved and redone everything. That was on. That's a different issue than this. But, yeah, right. yeah that's been. Yeah, we can't tie that to this. No, I'm so. just curious. Uh -oh. So, yeah. I, don't, I don't like the idea yeah. that I'm, I'm guessing in the past they must have just signed it. us yeah. in that sense. That, that's my larger concern is that a utility is telling us what we can and cannot do. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that we put ourselves in, on the code saying that we would have to have their signature because everything predates what's happening now. So taking it out of the code would be an after the fact. It, it doesn't help this particular situation, yes. but uh -huh. it would prevent this from <laughs> happening in the future. Okay, so let's just say uh, Attorney Sawyer, worst case scenario, uh, Excel may come after us, you know, to re relocate that easement or any danger of them are we opening ourselves for just more issues uh, as far as like legal concerns, as far as not following the code completely at all? Not so much. No, you're, you're the town board. You can vote to tell your staff to record this. I, I Again, I don't think there's a current conflict. I think Excel is looking at this as if at some point in the future they needed to underground or do something with the existing utility they don't want to have an argument that they waived whatever rights they have under their pre-existing easement by having signed this plat fair enough we'll deal with that 25 years from now or whenever uh, this issue becomes something we have to to confront for an end and again the goal would be to co-locate all the needed utilities within the space just to make sure that they're reasonably offset it. So, yeah. Okay. Further discussion or someone would like to make a motion? No. No, I have Okay. Does someone want to make a motion? So it would just be a motion to direct staff, staff to, to, to record the Autumn Ridge plat fine. without the Excel, Excel signature. signature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mr. Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the recordation of the final plat for the Autumn Ridge subdivision absent with the, uh, without the signature from Excel Energy. I'll second. Okay. Uh, motion by Trustee Brittenall to approve the recordation of the final plat for the Autumn Ridge subdivision without the signature of Excel Energy. Uh, seconded by Trustee Clausen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Thank you.
Jeff, you didn't ask me if I want to stay for the water. Oh, <laughs> you want to stay for the water? <laughs> 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 All right, fun begins. The next item on the agenda, <laughs> resolution number 23, series 2023, a resolution of the Board of Trustees acting by and through its water and wastewater activity enterprise, authorizing acceptance of a loan agreement for direct loan yes. or loans between uh, the Colorado Water Resource and Power Development Authority and the Town of Silt, Colorado for water utility improvements. I will right, we'll turn this over to Administrator Lehman and Attorney Sawyer. I'm going to kick this off and then I'm going to turn it over to our usual cast of characters who will uh, take us through a presentation and then answer uh, all the questions that we uh, that you may have uh, starting uh, with the next slide. Um, we've been working toward this for uh, this decision for more than three years and uh, we're kind of all in this together at this point. And uh, we can go to the next slide, which just shows a guy diving into the pond. Uh, or Jeff, do you want me to pull up the more recent one from Jim from today? Yes. Yes. Please. So I think Trey found this great illustration of us all jumping into the, uh, the deep together as we move <laughs> forward with this uh, project, hopefully. You forgot the shark. <laughs> yeah. That water is only six well, inches deep. <laughs> I'm not seeing any today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, I just wanted to just brief you very quickly on uh, what we think our action steps are. You're going to see this slide later. Uh, but tonight we'll just ask you to... Uh, view the presentation regarding the improvement uh, the water treatment improvement project again uh, and be pair, be prepared to uh, consider and vote on not five resolutions but only three and uh, attorney Sawyer is here to walk walk us uh, through all of that uh, but before we do uh, we uh, you asked us to compare or to provide some info on uh, some of our neighboring communities. So the next slide shows <clears> the <throat> rate comparison of uh, Rifle, Newcastle, and Silt. And you can see that uh, for the average user in Silt, which is around 37, 3,800 gallons a month, uh, if they were living in one of those other cities, uh, they would be paying something over under $40. Uh, that is not the case uh, here in Silt, and <clears throat> um, and I think while it's interesting to benchmark ourselves against these other communities, uh, I must point out that they're in different situations than we are. And uh, I think it, it as as interesting as it is, uh, I I don't think that's part of the conversation or part of your uh, considerations tonight. Everybody is in a very different place, and you know who knows. In not too many years from now, some of those other communities will be faced with uh, a similar situation. Um, Trey put this together, so I suppose he could answer any questions if anybody has any about this particular <clears throat> uh, graphic. What's the this, comparison of silts? This is base rates. This isn't on average users. This is your base rates and stuff. So the town's base rate is 40 something, Amy? It's uh, 5262. 5262 is our base rate. And that's for the first 2,000 gallons. And as you can see, they all vary on what the base rate covers. And then also on the um, tap fees, there's some other charges that are in there on different communities. It's not just tap fees. There's one community, a tap fee, a water connect fee, and then there's like two other fees that go along with the tap fee. Um, it was kind of hard to figure some of them out because they have all these different fees that are tied to taps that you would need if you got a tap. And then like in Rifle, they put a 12% surcharge on there for water tanks. So you take whatever your monthly bill is, times it times 12%, and 
add that, that's part of your monthly bill. It looks like. So there's just a variety of different. And most of these communities also don't have a raw water system for irrigation, so you're also paying for treated water for your irrigation you're paying too. So treated water for the irrigation and also one another thing that might help these towns is their sales tax generation is probably more than silt because of some of the big box stores and other things that they have right. in town as well. Rifle Rifle does not have an enterprise for water. They made a strategic decision to do away with their enterprise and they levied a tax specifically to help repay their, their water treatment plant. Uh, and so they are not restricted in the same way that Silt or Newcastle are to make sure that user fees are the exclusive source of maintaining their water system. Yeah, so that would be another thing that while it's not showing up on your water bill and rifle, when you go buy something at a store, you're also paying for that water plant every so time you not, purchase. It's not quite an apple to apple yeah, comparison. Comparison, yeah. So that wasn't an option for sale? You don't have a Walmart. You don't have item sales tax. We don't we don't want to we bust our yeah. enterprise fund. Yeah. Raise the taxes. And raise yeah. taxes to try and pay for right. for these things. Rifles decision was based on the fact that they knew that people from a lot of other communities shopped at in particular Walmart and that they would essentially have people outside of their community contributing to paying the costs of uh, their water treatment plant. So it's it's just it's a different scenario than what Silt is confronted with. Sitting in it. Learn something every night. I didn't know that about that. Good for them. So 5262 is uh, before we raise the rates. That's our base rate right now. Right now, and then it's going to be what when if if it goes through. That's coming up we'll on some other there. slides. I just want to compare the numbers since we're looking at the numbers here. What? I'll compare them all. Is this going to happen again then? Huh? Is it, are we going to compare these again with the new base rate? Okay. Sounds we good. can. Any other questions about this? Okay, so I'd like to turn it over to a uh, uh, presentation over now to Trey, uh, Pat, Sam. Jim, Mike Sawyer, Toby, and Tony are all here. Answer any questions uh, that you have, but I think uh, uh, Pat and uh, Trey are going to kick it off. Okay, yep. And the, these slides, we've went over them. How did we get here? You know, the current plant was put in service 2005. We moved the plate settler from the old plant to this plant. Um, the plate settler is undersized for the capacity we're using. In 2010, SGM did a study, made some recommendations. The board did not um, move on them at that time. In 2015, we don't have it on here, we put the alluvial wells in, right, to try to help with some of the um, turbidity out of the river. Due to well-to-well -well interference, the wells will not produce enough to run the plant. Um, in 2020, we had a complete change of staff and everybody over at the water plants. We proceeded to start cleaning and doing a lot of deferred maintenance. Took us a while to get all that caught up so we could really evaluate what the plant was. Um, Tony Zancanella became the ORC at that point. Um, and in 2021, I think it was, we uh, evaluated the plant. We made some basic recommendations. Um, we hired Dewberry to do a study on the plant. And we've talked about this for about every month since that study came out on what we need to do and which direction we're heading. And then I believe after this slide, the next one, um, yeah, we, the master plan, um, we had the second opinion done by DOLA. 
um, well, we didn't have it done. Dola did it with the grant they had. They kind of came to the same conclusion that Dewberry did. Um, we started out at like a $30 million estimate. Um, we currently um, was working off that. It dropped to $28 million. And then on the next slide, I believe, is the newest number. Whoops. Sorry. Oh, there we go. I skipped a slide. My bad. But that for construction of the water plant, the number that came from Dewberry on late Thursday was 24356636 down from the $26 million that we had at the 60% design <laughs> phase. And then I believe after this we will turn it over to Jim because it gets into numbers that I'm not going to be able to explain to you. Yeah, I wanted to clarify one quick thing. Uh, uh, that 90% number, of course, came from Garney, uh, with, uh, uh, and we got that uh, at the end of last week. So, uh, Jim, do you want to talk about this borrowing package? Sure. Uh, good evening. Um, so, with the change in the construction cost um, and a couple other changes along the way, we are now looking at a, a conservative estimate on the borrowing package of $17,950,000, basically. Um, we've got committed $9,395,000 of, of an aid package, which is broken out in the various buckets. Uh, you'll look at the, uh, the chart on the right and you'll see now that we're looking at three different loans and it's really two different loans packaged uh, uh, somewhat differently simply because the, the monies that the state is getting to distribute, the SRF is getting to distribute, have to be shown in certain buckets. And so what the state is looking at is a uh, two loan package, which is the leverage loan, which is the large loan package, and then a direct loan. And so it works out that you're going to have the direct loan, which you see a much larger dollar amount in terms of the, the, the project cost. And I apologize, I didn't change the Garney 60% to Garney 90%, but it is the 90% number, which is the 24,356,636. But what happens is you get, uh, because you were declared a disadvantaged community, you're borrowing $11,645,000 basically of principal of which um, 9,395 basically, or a good chunk of that is coming back off the top, bringing the loan amount down to $3 million. That loan will be at 1%. Then there's a smaller uh, supplemental loan, which will be part of the leverage loan package that will be at 3%, which is for $1,189,825. The rest of the project then is going to be funded through uh, the leverage loan, which we won't know the final details of until such time as that loan is actually sold. It's my understanding that has now slid until late November, early December to when that is actually going to be uh, issued. But you've got uh, a lot of positives that have happened. You've had a reduced project cost. That project cost has kept coming down. We did have a, an increase in the construction management cost that we weren't necessarily anticipating, um, but we did get that number in there. Um, there's the possibility, and we show it here, but we're not sure it's the best thing to do of reallocate, reallocating some unused boring project funds uh, to the waste wa uh, the, the water treatment plant. Um, but again, we're not going to know the final until sometime in November or early December of what's that that's going to look like. But that's where we come up with the seventeen million nine hundred and fifty thousand. I would say that we're in good position that that's going to be less than that because there's a couple of unknowns that uh, we really don't have in place yet. And if we go to the next slide, um, we're looking at this from a pretty conservative estimate. 
Um, it doesn't include a bond premium, which we anticipate you'll get, which will then bring the borrowing down a little bit more. It does not include a DOLA grant that you've applied for, and it seems favorable that that DOLA grant is going to come in. And we're also using an extremely conservative interest rate at this point. So what we're looking at is the maximum that we think we're going to be in a position or we're going to have to charge the customers is $105.62 a month. That's up from your current $54.42 average monthly bill to the average customer. And again, that average customer in SILT is using uh, 3790 five gallons a month, basically. Um, and remember, we've had conversations about increasing the rates kind of uh, to bring you to a status quo that if you weren't doing the water treatment plant, you really would need to bring your rates up so that the uh, water utility would be on a sound financial footing. That's about $18.93. And then the last $32.27 is basically for the water treatment plant itself. And that's how we get to the 10562 uh, across the board. If you go to the next slide, one of the comments when we had, uh, or one of the questions, comments, directions that uh, you gave us this last time was, is there a way for us to step into these rates? We've had conversations with the uh, SRF folks, and they have indicated that we can step into the rates. Um, so what our recommendation at this point would be is that uh, step one, we would go from the average customer paying $54.42 to an average customer paying uh, $74.07. And then in January, we would go to $105.62. Um, and what we have to make sure that we do is that those January rates, which is kind of the final step that we see uh, that's going to happen in the future, uh, is that you need that in place for a year before your first large principal and interest payment comes due, which we anticipate would be February 1st, uh, 2025. Um, so we're looking at trying to defer as much principal in 2024 as we possibly can, simply because we haven't had rates in place to generate any revenue to be able to make a large payment. So we, we need to push that off. Plus, you're going to be in the, con the construction process where you're going to have a lot of these proceeds from the buckets, the bond sales, eligible to earn you interest. So it's going to offset some of that interest cost uh, going in and going forward. And so that's our recommendation at this point to try to step into the rates. I think we're able to do that. There, uh, the, the SRF folks have, they calculated what they think the average customer was going to need to be charged. And it was 61, uh, 17 above what you're charging now. So when you look at the resolution that talks about the rate study, there's an additional $9 and change increase that's put way off into 2000, I think 28, um, before it would be implemented. And that will essentially be taken care of with some basic cost of living type increases in 2026 and 2028. But that gets us to that maximum number that they thought that we would need to charge, which is the 115.59. <laughs> We're not going to charge more than we absolutely need to at the end of the day. And while we talk about that 105.62 number as kind of where we think we're going to need to be, there's a lot that can change it. And I think there's a lot that's going to change it that might bring it down even further, which again is the DOLA grant. Um, the bond premium that we anticipate will help lower the, uh, the borrowing and then also the interest rate. So we should be able to bring that number down even further. And that again, helps us with saying, Hey, yeah, we're going to do this stepped in increase. We know kind of where we need to go up front. We know where we're going to go in the, and then we think we know we're going to go on the second step, but we can wait to set that until such time as we know what the bonds have sold 
for, and we know exactly what those costs are going to be. We'll also know whether that DOLA grant was able to be included and, and used to offset some of the costs for the, the water treatment plant. Does anyone have any questions for Jim at this time? I have a question, but I'm happy to yield to anyone else if they do. Jim, you mentioned a few minutes ago, it was back on slide nine, the one with the gray spreadsheet on the right, that there was, I, I'm paraphrasing, and forgive me if I'm, I'm not representing what you said accurately. You said there's a, a new construction management cost, and it's noted as being one and a half million dollars. We didn't know about this until tonight? Mm -hmm. What's in the package? That was my question, too. We were carrying uh, $420,000 in the budget, about, for construction management by Dewberry. And that's the number we, we had always thought it was. And we were informed about 10 days or so ago that it's really going to be closer to 1.5. So it's more than million. tripled. Correct. And we, we're working with them now to try to understand what that is. We don't have a, a proposal from them yet. Okay. My concern is that that offsets almost all of the savings that we've received in other areas. And it gets back to something the mayor's been saying is whatever the number is, that's the number we're going to arrive at via, via hook or by crook, so to speak. Yeah. And that, that's my concern is that that's a big number. How did we not know about this well, or, or have a better estimate of this until now when we have to make the decision? And I, I see Sam shaking his head as well. Like, here we are again. It's the 11th hour, and a million and a half dollars just got foisted into the project. Well, we haven't been working as hard as we've been working to see an extra million dollars go into the project. I can tell you that. No, um, and, and I'm not blaming I, anybody no, individually. I, I, it's just it's, this it's is frustrating. This is it, exactly the sort of thing we've been speaking about I with mean, a fearful mindset. <laughs> And here it is. Yeah, this is exactly You've just proven Mayor every Eichel concern that's been mentioned until now as being 100% accurate. Right. How does one line item more than triple? I, I, like so mathematically, so how, that is, how does that so happen? So it's not tripling because we're, we had 485 in the budget. Right. And now so we're going to 1.5. Which is triple so 485. It, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. tripled yeah. almost perfectly. Yeah. yeah. But so. again, how did. How did that? How did we? We didn't know this at sixty percent. I, I didn't ask the right question. Yeah. I didn't ask our team if we had every single cost in here. That's my fault. But why would the team not disclose every single cost when we're trying? To I keep don't the think there was anything nefarious about it, Sam. I think it was just people being busy trying to get to hitting marks, trying to make schedules. It's just the way it played out. And uh, so, nobody feels worse about it than I do. So is, is that number included in that 24 million, 35? Uh, it is not included in the 24, uh, 356. It is included in our overall sizing for the borrowing packages. So my question, staff to find out is if we are going to contract with Garney, who is coming into this as a construction manager at risk, it, why is Dewberry still a construction manager? We're hiring this company to now do the project for us. So at that point, Dewberry is no longer managing this construction project. I can answer it in very simple terms, and then uh, if you know if one of our engineers needs wants to come up and talk about it, that'd be great. Um, Dewberry is a designer, engineer, designer of the project. They have to certify to CDPHE that it was built. Let me back up. CDPHE then certifies that what they've built <laughs> meets the standards that are required. Dewberry then works and has to sign assurances and certifications to the state that it was built to those specifications. It's no different than if our town engineer designs a road, you continue to pay the town engineer to perform inspections and construction supervision to make sure things are implemented in accordance with the plan. 
So what were the contractual amounts negotiated with this company? Was there a contract? We, was we, there, we, just we don't have there? a contract for that at this point. We have a contract for design and engineering with Dewberry, and that's what they're working on today and have been working on up until now. At, um, I can't remember exactly what point it is. Uh, we'll negotiate a contract with them for uh, uh, construction oversight, basically. Thank you. But we've still got a giant red number on slide number eight. Yes, $24,356,636 for construction of the water plant. But it's not the total cost. No. We just and heard it's, it's a million and a half off. Why? That's and why I, I put that number off. on there and I there's, said there's construction, four, yeah, yeah, construction only. Yeah, yeah. That is what Garney's saying it's going to take them to build this plant. Right. Not, that's why I put and construction Not the only. oversight and management. Right. Yes. There's always been soft costs on top of that construction number. There's all there always are, and this that's one of them. So where are we getting that money from then? That extra triple, where's that going to come out well, of? Um, we we put the um, and we had four hundred windfall, seven hundred and fifty thousand in that we had. Uh, budgeted for this year for the boring project um, and we got the grant the EA, EIAF grant earlier this year to fund that so we took that 750 uh, which we were thinking about putting in the project anyway and we've got that reflected in here um, we have another EIAF grant for this project for a million dollars uh, that we've applied for that Deborah wrote uh, grant for that we will uh, I think we present on that uh, either the end of I don't know if we have a date for present for I haven't present, seen a date yet uh, either the end of September or first part of October and then uh, we'll know about that Halloween and then we'll we'll uh, uh, the jury's still out on whether or not we'll be able to reduce our loan amount by that number based on the timing of everything, uh, but that would, then that would cover that as well. Obviously, when we applied for the grant, we wanted the grant to go to reduce the total cost of the project. Now, if we get it, uh, it covers this oversight. But then aren't we kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul because when it comes time to do the boring, we don't have the money for that then? No, well, we, we, have, do, we, do that. we have a grant. That'll be the other, okay. Yeah, we got a grant for that. Yeah. We got the, the budget, yeah. and then we had a grant that takes both well, sub. I know that. The money that was budgeted is now available for other things. <clears throat> yeah. And the boring project is ongoing. We're moving forward with uh, work on that. Wait on the railroad. There's another potential DOLA grant that could potentially be applied to this, or no? The DOLA grant is the EIA. Is the EIA, okay. Us, you guys, am I, am I forgetting? No, nope, it's, that's yeah. correct. That's what it is, okay. Yeah. And now it sounds like the bonds aren't gonna be sold till later than what we thought by a month or two, which gives us more time for these grants to come in at least. So that's a positive. That's correct. Although when I asked- It may not be long enough, but it's, it right. gives us more time though. <laughs> So what's the final number? Soft costs, best estimates we have at 90%. What's the all-inclusive, nothing left out, soft, hard, whatever? Net, net after principal forgiveness and the grants that we have so far? All-inclusive. I'll let Jim answer that question because he is looking at You guys are making me do math He's real quickly, right but I can now. do that. <clears throat> Well, it's a good thing you're the numbers guy then. Um, the total project cost all in is $27,855,636. That includes the 90% number of 
the Garnet construction at 24,356,636. The original design and engineering contract for $1.8 million. The CMAR contract for 199,000. And then the construction management at 1.5 million. And then on top of that, you have grants that equal known grants that equal if i can get my computer to work i guess why are we figuring out these numbers during the meeting instead of having it on our slide you know that's kind of of ten you have a total of 10 million seven hundred forty five thousand dollars of grants um and then you've got an additional million dollars that might come through that dola grant can you uh show that slide a little bit bigger sheila or Amy, whoever's running that. I, yeah. I, I think all of it's up there, isn't it, Jim? Yeah. It is. It's all on there, yeah. So it's, it's. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> yeah, I can't make that any bigger, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. I don't see a $27 million uh, dollar up there. That's the, the reason you don't is because of the principal forgiveness that is shown in red. In the total column, if you look at the black numbers, those add up to the 27,855. And then the red numbers will add up to the offset. The offset, yeah. So it's 17, 7, 10. 10. 17, 944,000 at the very bottom net bond size correct yeah that's our that's that's the anticipated borrowing at this point not including the dola grant and or the the premium uh that the bonds are likely to be sold at and it's those three those three things that the the, the um that jim was talking about the last one being the interest rate which is really important obviously uh, I think what what did you say you had calculated that at? We're we're using what the state had used is which is three point six percent. The last time I ran the numbers uh, for where we thought the interest rate would come in, we thought it was going to be about three point two percent. But if we get the Dola grant, then that basically cancels out the Dewberry's million dollars. Correct. Over. It does. So uh, we're still in the same. And we're still in the same place. Boat. We're still also. Got that these off of my these contracts are still negotiations. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we're not signing any contracts tonight. We're approving to go for a loan, and then. The, after that, it'll be signing contracts that we could still potentially negotiate. Um, you know, as I have said at the meetings before, when there's a number, that's the number that you're going to hit. Um, so I do think I was surprised to see that we got from 26 to 24.3 on Garney's part. Um, the million dollars from Dewberry has nothing to do with them working their number and getting it down. Uh, so I appreciate the work there. Um, Looking through the Excel spreadsheet, the only category I saw where there might be some savings would be in landscaping. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, we're talking a million five in landscaping. There, there's there's forty some thousand dollars in the landscaping section that um, you know I understand we tear up you, know, you you tear up dirt you have to put some stuff back but um, as much as I love our town guys if we don't plant some you know twelve trees and some flowers over there. Um, you know, that's something you could always do it the other day. So, I mean, that's 
while it seems like thirty, forty thousand dollars is a small number, I still think those are the numbers that we continue to look at moving forward. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I agree with the landscaping because, you know, there's probably who knows how many spruces planted twenty years ago and what there's maybe a handful of them that are alive now. So I, I can see yeah. cutting back on the money for irrigation or and that, uh, landscaping. Yeah. I mean that's the time town has to take care of the trees. That's just, you know, that's a that's an architect design feature, and uh, that's every, gonna, that's going to be our new zero scaping zero showroom. Scaping. <laughs> gravel, gravel, <laughs> gravel, thirty eight bucks a ton. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than that, I you know, there was nothing glaring in that spreadsheet that looked like it was an astronomical cost or an inflated cost to me. Um, I don't know if anyone else went through. I, I did, and I wasn't yeah. able. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing that screams out of a line. So, yeah, there um, there was no big number to be found in there, much yeah. to my dismay. Dismay. But yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Forty thousand dollars we can get, then that's a start. Yeah. Um, what should our confidence level be in this this twenty seven eight fifty five six thirty six that we're currently at? What's to stop it from going up? There's no guarantee it could go up, it could go down. Yeah. That's going to be market driven. There's no other I mean, costs that are not laid out before us tonight. Right, we know there's the variable of the bond interest rate, but Sam's point is what other no, costs? I think we got everything covered. I mean, we can't go into this with a 100% number. That's just. You just can't do it. Yeah. It's unrealistic to be able to know that what every screw nail is going to cost throughout this entire project. That's why we get to a 90% number as a board. We decide if we feel confident with that number and we enter into a contract and then we're putting our faith in our the companies that we've hired to do what they're supposed to do for us. Um, I said at the last meeting I spent quite a bit of time researching Garney on the internet. Um, this is the field that they work in. This is, this is what they do. Um, you know, I've, I feel confident in their ability to complete the project. I've never, I have not worked with them before, <clears throat> so I don't know how they are on cost overruns, things like that. That's, um, you know, that's always a, an unknown. I've worked with Garney. Yeah. I've had good luck with them. I've never had a problem with them. And all the bids they put out, not that it was in the packet you guys got, but Toby has shared them with me. So I have seen the actual bids they've got from other companies to go into this project and read through them all. And I believe you guys saw the overview. I have a spreadsheet with over 2,000 line items breaking this project out that I have went through and bugged to Toby a lot with questions. <laughs> Ask me questions and stuff. So, just just so you guys know, I know that was a question you had before, but they have shared all their bid packages with me. I mean, I'm confident with the numbers. I still wish it would be half of this, but you know, we're not <laughs> going to get there. Well, there's still some opportunity to, to get pricing. There's some things we couldn't get pricing. <clears throat> Uh, subcontractors, you know, we're, we're looking concrete six, eight months down the road. The companies aren't willing to lock in yet. Give us a couple of months. We'll get you want to just jump up to the table oh. so we can get you, yeah, get you all recorded, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, there's there's more, there's oper there's going to be opportunity moving forward. Um, there's some there's some disciplines we didn't get covered. So we have good budgets in there for them. Um, like I said, concrete, we can self-perform the concrete. Garney can self-perform the concrete. But we still need to get competitive numbers. And there's a few of those disciplines that we didn't get competitive. Fire suppression is one. Uh, plumbing, we didn't get a good number on. Um, just a few, you know, minor ones, but we got the big ones covered. Electrical, um, HVAC. I guess those are the two big ones. The metal building. The building. The building. That's equipment, a big one. The equipment. And then the process equipment. And the process equipment's one. all, yeah, that's all good competitive numbers. Um, 
and and we had a lot of interest at first, and then some just they didn't want to deal with the you know the schedule too far out or whatever. So, but I think overall we got good coverage. So as this process goes on, of course I've kind of been in it, but just a quick question. So let's say you're going through there, and the company you're buying the skids from say, hey, we got a deal here. We got the same skid that was ordered by somebody, but they're not taking it. We're going to give it to you for a five hundred thousand dollar discount. Do we get that money back, or does that disappear? You get that money back. Okay. It's it's open book. It's open. We we spend what we spend, um, and it is it, it is in our best interest to get the best number. Okay. Now, to use that example, we can't compromise the design moving forward. So, the state is going to approve this piece of equipment. So we, you know, if we get an offer for something that's slightly different, there's going to be a lot of. So, okay. So now I'll go the other direction. Let's say you're building this and you're ordering something and the company says, you know, Hey, we got a skid here for another 300, $400,000. It's going to give you from a 30 to a 40 year plant. Is that something you notify us and say, Hey guys, you know, we, we spend that little bit of money and you got another 10 year plant. I'm just throwing, I mean, I'm Definitely. just saying. Definitely. And that does happen. That that's a great, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's, that's a really I've seen good happen where it can. Yeah. That's a good example. Um, there is one piece of equipment on here that I actually budgeted for a service plan just because this project calls for a two year warranty. They don't do two year warranties. They do service plans. So I thought that was kind of an, a, a different way to approach it. Um, there's other companies that, you know, uh, we're going to make sure we're going to hold them to this two-year warranty, but also their pricing once we sign them up. Um, and we hope during the, through the submittal process, uh, before we get the material, the equipment on site, we have uh, everything they know about it. So we need to meet the, the engineering criteria, the state's requirements, and the, state, and the, and the town's goals for longevity. Is there a budget item for staff training? There is, actually. Yeah, we it's uh, it's called startup and commissioning. Okay. And it's an every line item, and then at the beginning of the division eleven um, estimate, estimate yeah. okay. it's got just a lump sum for a uh, uh, we have a, a guy on staff, on on Garney staff that actually puts the training together. <coughs> So we do, we'll get, a, we'll get a criteria for the plant to run, but the individual pieces and parts need to be integrated. And that's gonna be, his, that's his job. And then we train staff. Okay. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to go with Garney over the other one, is because that gentleman has started, what, six or seven plants in the last eight years. Mm -hmm. And he's started a plant like this, so he's been, through startup of six or seven different plants already. So he knows it, he understands it, and yeah. that'll be a good thing because this is a totally different process than what the crew is used to running. Yeah. So question go back, you said about warranty. Um, I've dealt with this before. Now it does, I know you have a warranty for your product for the whole thing and overall. Does Trey, let's say there's a problem, does Trey have to take care of the warranty or is for the first time does he contact you for the warranty part for all the subs for X amount of time? He's gonna contact me. He's gonna contact Garney. There's there's gonna be a process. All he has to do is send an email, pick up the phone, whatever. If it's not me, it'll be somebody with Garney right. or Jefferson. Um, I'm gonna be the, the, the closest. Okay. For now. How long is Garney's warranty then? It's two years. Two years? Yeah. The project is two years. So it's we have to make sure, and once we get uh, the, the process equipment, mostly electrical gear, HVAC equipment, once we start using it, it's called beneficial use. That's when the warranty would start on these pieces of equipment. So we have to time everything really carefully. Right. So just a dumb question. I'm sure you have. I mean, I'm... I'm sure when you've looked at prices, you've looked at warranties. I mean, you're not taking the bottom dollar, but they've got to 
one week warranty where you spend a few, little more, they got a two year warranty. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you're going with, I mean, I know I'm just asking that. There's actually a couple of line items that you'll see in the estimate where I, I added dollars because they do not offer a two year warranty. Okay. So I'm buying the warranty. Okay. And, and okay, that's okay. That's what I thought I seen. I was just double checking that's right. that what that was. Okay. No, it. We got to hold their feet to the fire. So with some of these uh, equipment manufacturers and vendors, that's the toughest part of the contract negotiation is the warranty. Um, <coughs> you know, front end teas and says <coughs> uh, that they always push back on. So I think we've got uh, it's pretty solid that we're, we're going with a two year warranty. And that's how it's written. <coughs> so actually, there's a few pieces that are five, five-year warranties. Too. So, just a question on that: You got a piece of equipment that's got a two-year warranty. A year into it, they go bankrupt, and that it goes bad, and there is no that product is no longer available. Who pay? What? What? Do we, what happens then? Garnier, Garnier still covers it. it. Yeah, that's our cover. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean that's <coughs> and that's happened. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I trust me. I know it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. It's but, happened. But I can tell you, um, for the most part, everything we've sourced, priced, um, and equipment we've vetted, it's all been around a long, long time. Some, of, especially the bigger equipment. So I have a question for Tony. So um, sometimes during, during budget engineering, critical parts get lessened as far as uh, on process. How do you guys feel about the way the direction has gone and being able to function and as far as with the new design? Specifically with like the current operation? Well, with the budget engineering and things that have been pulled out and changed. Okay, so that, I think that's a two-part question. They have put a significant uh, resources in the startup and like commissioning both plants with being able to keep the one plant online and then come out over. We have worked directly with Garney on specific identifying items that we are keeping, like the finished water pumps, for example, and that that will inventory and keep track of. And so those parts of the project we are keeping uh, a separate like value log with Garney to present to the town as part of that. That's beta, made us basically able to maintain our budget here. There was also parts and pieces that didn't need to be replaced at this point. Yeah, and they're they're up to par. Those pumps that we're reusing and processes that we're reusing, they're gonna last for a while. They're not gonna we're not gonna be changing those out. There's no specific guarantees in no, life I mean, on those. That's why we wanted to identify them yeah. and associate a cost to that portion right. of it and make sure that we have that, like, at least budgeted and allocated. Right. We're doing our best to maintain that, yes. Right. And this design, the budget engineer design, is still going along with the original design for the most part? For the most part, yes. Yeah, okay. As the ORC, are you confident that this new plant is going to, I forgot how to word this, is going to be sufficient for our current size and the planned growth that it's designed for? Okay. What, what, what do you think it is, a 20, what, what do you, what is it, a 20 or 30 year plan? I mean, roughly, what are you thinking? Better be longer than 20. Oh, well, well, that's why I'm asking. I'm just going to be me. paying for it for 20. What? Yeah. We're going to be paying for it for 20. Well, so I'm better just last asking at least. what they're thinking. <laughs> have to defer to the growth rates that were assumed in the report at the time. But yes. Okay. But one of the big things is this design and whatnot should give us the actual expected value, the, the amount of water versus the plant that we had that we currently are using that was said to be this amount but actually it's only produced this amount. It, this should actually do what it says it's gonna do. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Put out high, high H2O. Huh? High quality high, high H2O. Quality. <laughs> 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 All 
I know we're, we're jumping all over the place because I'm going to jump back to Jim and maybe Jeff. What do we do? What's the plan with our current loan on the existing water plant? Jim can talk about the wraparound. I'd so one of the things that we approached the uh, SRF on was to wrap around our this loan with the existing loan outstanding so you weren't doubling up. It's not a huge dollar amount, but every dollar helps. Um, they seemed amenable to the concept, but we just haven't gotten to the that level of detail on the borrowing where we, we've gotten an amortization schedule that we can react to. We have provided them what our preference would be, uh, or at least the concept of our preference. Uh, we haven't had any feedback since that time. And then Amy, what is our current balance on the existing plant and when's the final payment date? Um, so 2027 is the final payment date and I would have to pull an invoice to know exactly what our, our uh, outstanding principal is. I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, I'll, I'll... Um, the outstanding principal, if it's based upon the calculations, Amy, that you and me did earlier this year, I believe the principal payment has already been paid. So the outstanding balance is... Five hundred twelve thousand dollars, five hundred fifty-eight for the water portion, not for the entire thing. Yes, that's just the water portion for for both loans. The uh, um, it's a little, it's just shy of one point nine million. Outstanding is uh, uh, one, $1,764,400. So the, the wraparound would be that 512 would just be added? It, yeah, we would basically what we would do is the principal amounts for 24 through 27 range from about 124,000 to 130,000. So our goal would be to pull out roughly, you know, on a normal principal payment about that same dollar amount so that you're not doubling up on the loans. And we push that so it amortizes on the back end of the loan as opposed to upfront. So we'd paid interest on the uh, part of the loan that we've already paid interest on. We're not putting it into no. the current loan. No. He's moving the payments that we would pay on right. the the loan that we have right now. He's moving the hundred and twenty four thousand dollars to one hundred and thirty thousand dollars, or the loan that we haven't received yet on the backside of that loan, so that. We're not paying. We're not. We're not paying two loans at the same time. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. We're not. We're not uh, refinancing our current loan into the new loan. Correct. Okay. And that's not going to have any effect on our water rate. But it will. It, it will make a slight reduction in what we would need to increase the rates to. And, you know, as, as the Board of Trustees has time and time again said, anything we can do to bring that rate down is a positive. Okay. So I guess the discussion that I feel the board needs to have is, do we feel like the citizens can handle the proposed rates. Well, we can't afford both the water and the sewer plant. I know that's not answering your question, <laughs> but. <laughs> well, I think that question is answered by staff because I couldn't tell you 
the you know the numbers of citizens that couldn't and the ones that could but I'm thinking that this since this is pre presented to us you guys obviously think the citizens can handle that I think they're just presenting us with what it will be what it will I be yeah, I don't think it's I, I don't think staff has made that judgment on what well who's who has the data to make that judgment that's the question we should have had answered before <laughs> this meeting too well I as far as I can tell the public's not here in this room no but we have numbers we have data collecting collection where's the number guy on that and who would that be for what we have for late payers or just for the to be able to handle this i mean that's uh i mean well that you'd have to have everybody's budget yeah from the t each citizen's budget we don't have that no but, but we do, i think we what the mayor's trying to say data. is if people felt i mean we did have people come and when we we're talking about raising the rates they were here let us know hey this is what we think this is where we're at jerry's had people talk to him saying we understand this needs to happen if whatever you can do to if you can staggering it whatever we can do to ease into it so it's not happening all at once it'd be helpful but we understand it is what it is it's going to need to happen and one thing we just got to remember some of that falls back on the old plant i mean that's yeah. just where it is yeah, should yeah, have been done years ago or decision to it's start just with. decisions well, that should have been made years. we can't go backwards 2010 water treat pre-treatment should have probably been done like it was recommended yeah. but the, like i said there's no right they, re they failed they re you know rejected it so, you know, I can't blame, you know, $30 of that was back from the old rate, you know. So really the new plant isn't that bad, but it's, we got to catch up. One yeah. argument is that Trustee Seifert, catch up, we should be charging more already. And the difference between the amount that we should be charging more is a s small step uh, compared to, you know, the 94 up to the 105. Um, so... It's fixing a little bit of history, and that is one of the arguments that I find it acceptable to go even up to that rate, because if we were to be charging the correct amount to maintain the current plant, we would be already at a higher rate. Well, yeah, it would go up to $18, even if we didn't you know, do a new water plant. So the new water plant's only adding, I've, it's not in front of me, but like thirty-two dollars is what the plant costs. Yeah. But just if you advance then, two slides, then it's uh, eighteen something. Yeah, two slides back. Yep, slide ten. Nope, the other direction. Either way, we'd have to. Yeah, right rates. there, eighteen ninety-three. Nope. Actually, go one more slide, and I apologize. That chart did not get updated. This is the recommended jump in rates. You can see on the left-hand side of the page what your current rates are, which is the base rate of 5262, and then the tiered rates. The average customer is that 5442. We're recommending to, you know, just to, you know, the interim step going up $19.65, which brings the base rate to $63.30. The tiered rates will will increase to the six, six seventy five, seven fifty, eight and a quarter, and nine. And then in January, and these numbers are still yet to be determined because we still have a couple of unknowns, we believe that we're going to be in a position where you've got to go up an additional thirty one dollars and fifty five cents on the average customer, uh, which brings we don't adjust the volumetric side, but we're just bringing the base rate up to $94.85, which gets you to the 105.62. And that's, the, I mean? that's our recommendation for easing into it between now and when the rates need to be in place. If we can do something different once we have a better idea what the amortization schedule is going to be for 2024, We'll come back to you with that and make that recommendation. So worst okay. case scenario, we citizens can afford this and we default on the loan. I've asked what, what happens at that point. You can't default on we this loan. You can't default on this loan. 
Well, I, I mean that from the standpoint that the loan agreement will contain what's called a rate covenant, whereby this board is agreeing to increase the rates to whatever the amount is needed to both operate your system, maintain your reserves, and to pay the debt. So whoever can pay will get their rates raised? Is how that I happens. guess. If you, if you have a lot of people not paying their water bills, the rates will have to go up on those who pay. But that's, that, that is how you get this financing. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I've, I've heard plenty of people, you know, scream me off, flip me off, and I've had about the same amount that are, oh, yeah, we, we need this. This should have been done years ago. So so I'm guessing half can pay it and half can't. Yeah. The truth is most people will find a way, right? If the, I'm oversimplifying it, but if the price of bread and milk goes up, we begrudgingly pay it, but the money has to come from somewhere. I think it's going to be other aspects of their lives that well, suffer it's, for it. It's like when the price of gas goes from two fifty to yeah, four dollars a gallon. That's a better example. I I drive less. You, you, know? you mean you have to do what you have to there do. There's some behavioral changes. I think if people are close to the next tier, or if they're a little bit into the next tier, you'll see some conservation in terms mm -hmm. of water usage to try and get below that. It's it's a difficult question to answer simplistically i think there will be some people who can't pay and i think we need to come up with a strategy for dealing with them but i don't think it's as many people as i fear and in government there is that decision in place based on human behavior in itself um, sometimes you can make rule like predicting that and you can be wrong and sometimes you you can't uh, but we are talking about water here, and if we don't go forward with this project now, which that's where I'm at, wow, we've gone great lengths to gain a large sum of money towards the project, and the community wants cleaner water for the majority part who doesn't. And um, what about some of the programs, Amy, <coughs> that you have mentioned in the past that people that cannot afford to pay the water bills, are those still available out there? Um, but the LEAP program has ended. That was part of ARPA funding, and so that's over. That doesn't mean that they won't get funding again in the future, but the pot of money that they were uh, being able to utilize is is gone now. Um, I, uh, there, and I don't know if I, I'll just bring it up again for the people that are senior rates or, and this is not included in these dollar amounts, but you could entertain reducing the sewer base rate like we do for seniors and disabled. They pay half the water rates. We can offset the increase for the seniors and the disabled by um, doing half the, the sewer rate um, for a little while to help them ease into that as well. I think there's there's options on what the town can do to help people that may not be able to afford their their water bill. I, I don't think it's going to be where all of a sudden half the people in town are not paying their water bill and we have to worry about defaulting on a loan. You know, I think we, as a town of 3,000, we might have, you know, a very small minority of people that can't afford the new rates. And I think that there's ways that we as a town can probably assist with that. I think it also well, those individuals thing, might qualify for some program some or program something or, that can get them assistance. Yeah. And that's why what they, you know, people I did talk to said they have no quarrels with it. But if we can postpone some of it to like after the first of the year, that's when like your pension, Social Security, they yeah. get some raises so they can budget that in for next yep. year instead of all of a sudden tomorrow morning they got to come up with another 50-some bucks. 13 they can handle, but yeah. gives them a little time to redo their budget. Well, and I can share that on, on a normal month, we have anywhere between 8 and 13 people whose water gets shut off out of the 1,300 um accounts that we have yep. so it's not a lot of people that not water is being shut off for non-payment tenth of a percent yeah 
But it does happen. And I guess it happens it, in every it, community. It happens in every community. It does happen in every community, yes. It happens. But I think if if I think the numbers would be quite a bit higher percentage wise if there were people who um were struggling. Yeah. And the proposal to step up in <clears throat> October is eleven dollars for the base rate, and then in January is forty two dollars. For the base rate and of I, an increase, yeah. and I think Jeff brought it up about maybe not, you know, doing the sewer rate, the three yeah, percent, it isn't much, but it would help. It helps, yeah. It help a little Keeping bit. It flat, yeah. You know, so, so there's I, ways of doing it. I feel that the citizens can't afford not having a new water plant, and being in the industry. Um, <coughs> We have a chance to give them a some quality water. I mean, and yeah, we should have had this should have been done years ago, obviously, and it lands on our plate. But definitely uh, something that needs to happen. Well, not only are we giving quality, more, more consistent, more reliable quality water to the current citizens, but by doing this, we're going to allow the town to grow, which then is going to benefit them in. We're going to have more sales tax, more property tax, more other things to allow f for other improvements in town that's going to benefit everybody. Well, yeah, we won't be, if we have that, because we'll we don't be able to bring this, in some outside, you know, some more yeah, tap fees we, in and stuff. Exactly. If we don't do yeah. this or we know we can't have any growth and then we won't be able to have well, those benefits. And you can pretty much figure every year, and I bet you guarantee it's going to go up another 15% construction costs. By the time I, we're done, it could. It's yeah. not going to get cheaper. No. So you take 15% on 28 million, that's another three, four million right off the bat every time we wait. So yeah. I feel like all the citizens are going to be tightening their belt, and the town should be tightening its belt too. I mean, can't double everyone's rates and then go put new statues on the corners of, to decorate the town at the same time. Yeah, mm -hmm. but a lot of that comes Very from common. different funds too. So yeah, but, yeah, but people uh, don't look at that. No, they still, you they know, we still got to be conservative fine. because people, people are going to see. They, see that, they don't yeah. care. They don't know yeah. where it comes from. Well, all Trey, of a there goes your statue. We were putting up of yeah. you. I'm yeah. sorry. Your Christmas lights are on at the wastewater plant, and you're getting yeah. Yeah. social media comments I mean, about it, things like that. Like, yeah, there has to be the town has to be conscious about things like that as well too. Yeah, I feel. Yeah. I, I'm okay. just saying you can't stop repairing your streets just to no. pay for the water plant. Right. Said my piece. I, <laughs> no, I think they can afford it, but that's the reason why I brought up the, the sewer plant. I think that we might be crossing the line at that point. You'll have, I think you'll have a lot of people who just can't afford it at that point. So I think I think the water plant, yes, but well, I think by the time the sewer plant comes, I don't yeah. think this board's going to be here, so it's, it'll be Trey. <laughs> no, yeah, it'll be Trey. But this decision may determine that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trey's, Trey's yeah. going to be town administrator then, and he can worry about it. That's right. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I do feel. I'm like happy this, where I'm at. <laughs> I do feel like the board and town has worked hard to turn over every stone possible to get this price down. And worked really hard on getting it to where it's at now so i mean i think due diligence has been done um so yeah i'm pretty confident in this in this idea yeah i mean they've got it down to 24 and we've got more money than we thought we did for forgiveness so as long as there's no more soft what are they called soft expenditures or whatever soft, soft costs soft costs, oh, yeah. soft, soft, soft soft costs soft is going to slap us in yeah. the face later on yeah. say, say a million dollars does not feel very soft yeah <laughs> no no but i say that, yeah that extra money for the boring project yeah definitely put toward this jeff's going to win the lotto and he's going to write a check off yeah yeah he was yeah. he's he's taking off wins the lottery he wins the lottery his keys he keys to be on the desk yeah. in the morning uh, every day in the exactly. lottery. <laughs> So okay. I just, to summarize this discussion, just so see if we're all on the same page. So we're as confident as we can in the number we're being presented. Yes. We think we need to slowly raise our, raise our rates just to get, yep. I mean, people used to it and get to where we need to be. Yes. Yep. Um, 
I think we need to negotiate with Dewberry for a surprise. Agreed. Um, and we need to get another million dollars from the EIF. Yep. We'll smile pretty when we go to that presentation. <laughs> We'll take Derek with us again. He helped us on the last one. Break out the your good hat, That's Trey. ridiculous. <laughs> 30 seconds, six and a half minutes. <laughs> and then, Jeff, you mentioned that we only need to pass three of these tonight, not all yeah, five. Yeah, so uh, if, if you're done having this conversation, we can turn it over to uh, our attorney, Mike Sawyer, and he can talk about uh, the, uh, the resolutions that we are asking you to consider tonight and why we're not considering the other two that you had in your packet. So I would note for the board, uh, a lot of stuff has been happening very quickly in the last few days with regard to uh, the materials that you're receiving and uh, trying to get the state to comment on and provide us guidance on what we need to do uh, in order to secure this financing. and so. There has been a lot of juggling that was happening literally the day of packet and since packet has, has happened. Uh, we had a long discussion, or my office had a long discussion with uh, the revolving loan uh, representative earlier today uh, who had previously indicated that we needed to be approving resolutions, accepting the financing, and approving loan agreements at this meeting in order to stay on the trajectory to receive the financing by uh, close of the year. Uh, after lengthy discussions over the last few days, uh, it we have reached uh, understanding with the state that we do not have to do resolutions 23 and 24 today. Instead, you will be receiving uh, for your consideration at the next board meeting an ordinance, uh, which will be in large part drafted by what's called bond council. So anytime you go out and obtain a sizable indebtedness, including from the state, you're required to hire uh, an attorney who specializes in uh, the processing of large indebtednesses. It's called Bond Council. Uh, and the Bond Council will draft an ordinance which we will have in your packet for the next meeting and will contain all of the information plus much more needed information that was uh, supposed to be in resolutions 23 and 24. So that, that approval is coming to you at the next meeting. Um, there are three resolutions we need to do tonight. Uh, resolution number 25, uh, resolution uh, approving the appointment of bond council. Uh, the town has previously worked with uh, an attorney in Denver by the name of Tom, Pel Tom Peltzman. He's with a law firm, Kutek Rock. Uh, he has a large practice group at his, that firm. They specialize in bond issuances and municipal indebtedness. Uh, we have reached out uh, to him. Uh, he is available to handle this on an expedited basis. And so resolution number 25 uh, is to retain Mr. Peltzman and his firm to undertake uh, the bond council work. Uh, or I guess I should say to authorize Jeff to obtain an engagement agreement with Kutek Rock, which we would then bring back at the next council meeting for your formal approval. Um, that is, resolution 25 is a requirement of the state that they are asking for at this time because the retention of bond council is time sensitive for getting this project done. Uh, resolution number 26, uh, is a uh, resolution that would adopt a water rate study and provide for adjustments to monthly water rates consistent with the table that uh, is in front of you on this, the screen. 
Um, the state made some red line changes to that resolution earlier today. Uh, and I will present that and kind of go through what those changes are as well as work with Jim Mann in providing any additional information you may have about how the rate structure increases per this resolution would occur. And resolution number 27 uh, is a resolution authorizing the town administrator to uh, negotiate what's called an early procurement contract with Garney. Um, under the various grant agreements, we are not allowed to engage in pre-construction activities until certain approvals have happened. Uh, there is a, Jeff, you may have to chime in and help me here. There is a need to begin the acquisition process for time sensitive materials in order to meet the construction uh, uh, timelines that have been set by Garney. And this will allow Garney to begin that process of acquiring the materials in such a manner that it does not penalize the town for engaging in pre-construction activities. Does that sound correct? Okay. Um, so those are the three uh, resolutions. Uh, I guess we can start with resolution 25, again, uh, directing the staff to uh, retain uh, bond council. Um, we, I'm happy. Do, we yeah. do have those red lines if you want to put them. Well, the, the, there's not really red lines to 25 and 27. There are red lines to 26, and I printed all oh, those. Oh, documents. I did. Okay. Oh, it's great. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. I've, I've got all those here in paper. So if there are any questions with respect to uh, Resolution 25 and the retention of bond council, I'm happy to answer any questions. At this point, do we go over cost contracting this company? Or is that something that, that the administrator? That, that's a good question. I, I actually did email Jim and, and Jeff uh, during this meeting. Um, bond council is not necessarily inexpensive. I would expect this to be somewhere between a fifty and a $75,000 expense, although we will get more information about that in advance at the next board meeting. Uh, Bond Council provides a very important role and probably most importantly, they sign a series of disclosure documents that if they're wrong, uh, the bondholders would have a legal action against that law firm for misrepresenting the issuance of the bonds. Um, and you can't issue the bonds without having bond counsel and somebody to sign those various disclosure documents. So, again, we're not, uh, we're not actually approving that tonight. We would be getting an engagement agreement from them and bringing that back to you for, for approval at the next meeting. No, that, that was my question. <clears throat> Just for the record, if there is a any slight chance that this board is not going to approve moving forward with any loans, then there would be no reason to approve any of these three. Now, that is correct. If, if this board is going to roll the dice on the current uh, water treatment plant, 25, 26, 27, as well as our ordinance bring, that we would bring to you at the next meeting are all superfluous. So approving these is making a commitment without making an official commitment. Because if we approve resolution number 27 and we start and we start procuring items and we decide we're not moving forward, the town will then be on the hook for those items that are procured. That is correct. That's correct. We, we, would, be, we would be negotiating a contract with Garney potentially between now and the next meeting uh, that we again would bring to you for formal ratification. Yeah. So we can't we can't acquire anything until you've approved the contract. contract. But this directs 
Jeff to negotiate that contract. And again, this was having this resolution in place creates a safeguard against there being an argument that we have engaged in pre-construction activities that would then penalize us with respect to grants and loan forgiveness, which cannot, we cannot begin the process of construction until we have all of those approvals lined up and, and ratified. Okay. Any more discussions? No. I, I think we can take these one at a time, and I do need a little bit of uh, time to go through Resolution 26 and the changes the state has asked okay. for. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's discuss 25 as a board right now. Is there anything? I mean, we have to have a bond council, so there would be I mean, the previous discussions. It seems like this board is ready to move forward. We need to have a bond council to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as bond council doesn't cost us a million bucks, yeah. <laughs> and again, that 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 usually bond council does these on a fixed fee basis, and we will be negotiating that over the next few days with Mr. Peltz. Okay. All right. Then would someone like to make make a motion on resolution twenty five? Mr. Merrill, make a motion to for, uh, approve resolution number twenty five, series twenty twenty three. <laughs> The resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Silk, Colorado, acting by and through its water and wastewater activity enterprise, approving the appointment of Town Bond Council. Second. Okay. Uh, motion by Trustee Brittenall to approve resolution number 25, series 2023, seconded by Trustee Flores. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Take one past me. Yes, sir. All right, so okay. resolution 26 probably is the thank you more weighty of the resolutions you're going to approve or are going to consider tonight. Yes, oh, just a, do we have two more copies? We're short up here. We only have five. Oh, no, yeah. there. Uh, no, I, I no, thank you. We got them. We got it. I thought I counted. Right, I take one. I'll be all right. Oh, yeah, I included that. Uh, oh wait, who did, who this did, is 26. Right? Well, no, they're the same. Hold off on that. Who didn't end up with one of these? Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. So now you can take one of those and then pass those around. That's the clean version of what I just passed out. Got it. Okay. So the doc, the first document that was handed out to you is a red line of resolution number 26, and it includes some changes that have been requested by the state revolving loan uh, representative. Um, the second document being passed out to you is the same document with those changes having been accepted and with the exhibits to that resolution attached. So the, there's a change in the whereas clause defining what the average uh, customer uses as that kind of helps to understand the, the rate uh, study that's attached to this. And here's where uh, the, the state required some very specific uh, changes. So the way that, that Jim Mann and I uh, had originally phrased this resolution was that the town was authorizing an increase in water rates of an up to amount. So the $61.17, which is reflected in uh, the spreadsheet that <coughs> Jim, you might request that that page be put up on the back up on the screen. Um, and that that would be implemented through uh, further resolutions by this board at such times as your financial and analyst uh, indicated that you needed to make uh, rate increases. The revolving loan fund people said that, uh, that that was not acceptable, that we actually had to have a, a structure for when those rate increases would occur. And so on the table that Jim Mann uh, had been showing to you a few minutes ago that had 
um, a rate increase uh, in October and then a rate increase in January of uh, 2024. Uh, the state wanted us to put those amounts in and those amounts do not add up to 6117. Uh, there's an additional nine dollars and ninety seven cents that uh, that was missing because it wasn't needed at this time. And the state said, no, you actually have to schedule when that might would go into effect. And so Jim calculated when that additional uh, amount of money was anticipated to be needed based upon uh, annual uh, cost of uh, cost of living or kind of inflationary increases and he determined that that would be january 1 2028 so this resolution does two things it adopts a water rate study and the water rate study consists of two exhibits uh, one is uh, Exhibit A, and that's that. It's the spreadsheet that uh, uh, shows the uh, the proposed water rate at 105.77, and then the more detailed spreadsheet that Jim prepared. That if you have questions about you're going to have to talk to Jim. It's, it's in the second of the documents that I handed out to you, uh, starting on page four, and it says 2023 CIP Water Utility Operations Cash Flow Analysis. And that, that, is the, that is the water rate study that has been conducted by Jim Mann that we are approving. And then the second part of this resolution is to uh, adopt an increase in water rates uh, in the amount of up to 6117, which gets implemented starting October 1, 2023, with an increase of $19.65 a month. Uh, and then in January 1, 2024, in the amount of $31.55 a month. And then in, on January 1, 2028, with an increase of $9.97 a month at that point in time. So I guess the question should be asked, what happens if two weeks, four weeks from now, uh, there is a major shift to where the board does not uh, move forward with the financing and uh, the construction, a construction contract with Garney, uh, whether there's a decision made not to do that or if for some reason it's delayed uh, the answer would be we would pass a, a resolution backing out of this resolution uh, so that the water rates did not automatically index upward so this is this is in and of itself not a a binding uh, rate increase if the town were not to move forward with finalization of the, the financing for the water treatment plant. Um, Jim, do you, do you want to chime in? This, this really is the adoption of work that you uh, prepared. Yeah, and, and I think the, there's, there's two key provisions that I, I want the Board of Trustees to remember is that when you adopt the ordinance that you're going to see in a couple of weeks, basically you're covenanting that you're going to do certain things to make sure that the rates are in place to pay for the prince, the operation of the utility, the principal and interest on the bonds, and then provide a certain amount of reserves. If the money is not needed, the board is in a position where they can adjust rates so that they can bring that down. On the other side, if um, you know there's a lot of conservation or you know reduced water use, the the other side of that equation is that you're also agreeing that you would increase those rates. Um, we've gone so far as to say you know based upon what the SRF work did. 
we're saying you're increasing it up to that maximum of 115.59 for the average customer. We don't believe that we're ever going to get there, even though this uh, resolution basically says at some point you're going to get there. We don't see that you're going to get there until you have some inflationary increases along the way, um, simply because the the numbers that the state put together are pretty conservative when it comes to looking at um the kind of the credit profile that they put together on behalf of the town which that's where they came up with that 6117 um so i you know i think you are going to be well within your your uh, bounds to do some interim rate increases to get to a certain point and um i think we've laid these out in a pretty cogent manner to take a couple of steps so that you're not hitting the the customers or the residents with a large increase in one shot and there may be ways for us to further stretch it out a little further so uh, happy to answer any questions on the content of the resolution as to the rate study documents jim would be the person you'd ask questions of and when someone's ready to make a motion and would like to help format that. I have one question because I'm not a, a lawyer. So me reading this seems like we're authorizing an increase in October of 19 or yeah, so authorizing in November, October to impact November water bills in the amount of 1965 a month. So me reading that would be that we're authorizing another increase in December of 1965 a month. And then when we hit January, we're authorizing another. No, this, this is, and, and this, I believe bears out on, on the spreadsheet on exhibit A. Uh, or maybe not, but it's a one-time rate increase. It's a one-time increase. Yeah. Yes. That's what Correct. It is. Yeah. It's, it's a two-step rate increase, uh, Mr. Mayor. It's October 1 going up 1965, and then January 1 going up an additional 3155. It's not 1965 every month until we do a larger increase in January. Yeah, so I understand that, but the language in here, because it will be implemented in two or more increases. If the language is said in two increases, then it'd be the October one and the January one, two or more makes it seem like. Well, but there's the third one, January 2028. Every month. This, this I know is, what we're trying to do, but that's why I'm asking. I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, so. No, I, I appreciate it. This is the language that was approved. It was approved. Okay. <laughs> so I'm reticent to change it because okay. They may not like the change, even change. if it even if it is a better clarification. <clears throat> but, but I guess to go on the record, this resolution would implement uh, a rate increase of uh, nineteen dollars and sixty five cents on October one, which would be felt by the consumer November of this year. Sure. And then implement another rate increase of thirty-one dollars and fifty-five cents a month on January 1, 2028, which would be felt by the consumer in February of next year. And then it does authorize a rate increase of nine dollars and ninety-seven cents in 2028. But again, I strongly suspect that the the town will have its costs dialed in by that point and you'll be talking with Jim Mann to uh, determine what needs to happen at that point and it may or may not be nine dollars and 97 cents so. okay so we will and that would be I guess in the bond that would potentially tie us into when can the bond tie us into a different rate structure like our current bond is we have to do three percent a year and, I, and Jim, I think you've you've factored in some annual step ups and in, in rates into your analysis, haven't you? Correct. What I what I uh, anticipated was that the town would be implementing a 
you know, inflationary increase every other year, and I used 4%. Um, if you chose to do 2% a year, that would be fine. I did not see, based upon the, the inputs that we put into the model, that you would need to do a 3% on an annual basis. But again, that is going to be something you have to evaluate every year based upon the current finances of the, the utility to determine and make sure that you're meeting your covenants that you're agreeing to in terms of operating the utility and paying for the debt. Okay. Any further questions? Mm -hmm. What is our proposed language to approve this resolution? Ah, yes, thank you. So I, the uh, motion would be to approve resolution number 26, series 2023, in the form that was handed out by the town attorney uh, during the meeting. Uh, I will note that I have already provided Sheila with a copy of the updated resolution. Well, Mr. Mayor, make a motion to approve resolution 2623, a uh, series 2023, with the uh, form that was handed out or the re review revised one that was handed out by our attorney at this meeting as presented. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Trustee Seifert to approve resolution number 26, 2023. Uh, in the revised form handed out at this meeting by the town attorney. And that was seconded <coughs> by Trustee Poston. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Which leads us to resolution number 27. Okay. Resolution number 27 again is a, a resolution authorizing the uh, town administrator to negotiate a contract with Garney for early procurement. Uh, again, this resolution provides a uh, security against uh, engaging in pre-construction activities which could bias the town for grants and, and for loan forgiveness. Um, if you have kind of specific questions about things that Garney has in mind, we have their representative here and he can talk about what that contract may include. Saving us a million dollars. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. If, did anyone? Mm -hmm. well, it's pretty obvious. It seems, yeah. yeah. It seems I like don't have anything though. We have a line here we don't want to cross, right? Discussing. We procuring. We, we, we would like that million dollars and yes. not to be biased against obtaining it. Obtaining it, okay. Okay, so when I was reading the package, I was reading through the board hereby directs and auto, uh, authorized the town administrator to negotiate early procurement uh, with Garney, not to exceed five million. Um, the early procurement contracts shall be approved by the board prior to execution by mayor and down administrator the dollar amount call out my attention um, early procurement um, so can you explain in layman terms attorney Sawyer uh, what that would look like and what does that you know means just so I can better understand and the public can understand as well I, I actually am gonna ask Garney who's, who's been involved in these early <laughs> procurement efforts oh on other projects to kind of discuss yeah, what they actually what that just would uh, just finished a, a rather sizable one on another project okay <clears throat> um, so what what an early procurement package does is it gets um, long lead item equipment uh, things like um, generators uh, motor control centers for electrical gear uh, or for electrical systems uh, it releases these for submittals, engineering, and subsequent pr procurement. Um, a lot of the equipment we have, I think the generator is the longest lead item, and it's around 70 weeks. 
So that's, and that's a big, dump, that's a, that's a long time. It's not a huge, it's probably a three or $400,000 piece of equipment. It's just going to take a long time to get it. So the, the, the $5 million number was pre, pre bid, but that was a, just a rough, just a rough estimate of the, of the, of the big items. Mm -hmm. Um, the the metal building the the high rate clarifier equipment filter equipment electrical gear things like that so that would look like just a a package or a or a change order to the current package i don't know how we how we word that i think we have actually it's we're pretty close to where our contract is now it would be a change order for the equipment and then the fees the administration to get the submittals and engineering for the equipment. Okay, I'm in my accounts payable world. I was familiar with uh, purchase order, but I don't mm -hmm. know what a change of order is. A so change we, order is so we have a we have a contract in place, so it'd be just a an amendment to that contract. Is a change order. Okay. And and so the the five million dollar number. So Jeff and Trey and. Garney will be working on determining what these high lead time items are, and they'll be putting that in a, a again, a, 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 a side contract, which we'll then bring back to you, and it probably won't be $5 million. We just wanted a number in there that would encapsulate an estimate of what we thought these might be. It might be four million two twenty-five, or, you know, but, but we'll go, they'll be going through the list of items in the spreadsheets that, that have been submitted, uh, identifying those things that have longer lead times and putting that into a, a separate contract. Yeah, so this is not an additional $5 million on top of the contract. Yeah. It's the allowing contract. It's them to go to get the change order to secure those services those, those and products, equipment yeah. with them. So that doesn't advance. mean we are taking any of those amounts aside prior to us finalizing the loan. We're just saying it's okay for you to go ahead and negotiate mm -hmm. those specific contracts up to that amount. Up to that amount. And to get that, yeah. Because yeah. we don't want to order this, say this generator, when the project starts and then we run 15 weeks over because we can't do anything without the, the generator here. So Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And a yeah. lot of stuff, the sooner you order it, the better the price. Could right. potentially again things are getting also, cheaper. They're not getting cheaper. They're not getting any cheaper. Yeah. But yeah. the 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 dollars are already in the already. And yeah. it's more the dollar. It's but it's the time lead time on stuff. That's lead the, time right. and stuff. Yeah. 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 And the resolution yeah. just says the town administrator can go out there and negotiate those contracts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And this will come back well, again in front of this in front of the board. Yeah. You'll, okay. you'll see you'll, it again. You'll see yeah. this again. Yeah. Okay. Before anything happens, mm -hmm. it will be back with the board of trustees. Yeah. Okay, thanks for explaining. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion or someone like to make a motion? Okay. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to approve Resolution 27, Series 2023 as presented. I'll second. All right. Uh, motion by Trustee Seifert to approve Resolution Number 27, Series 2023 as presented. Seconded by Trustee Clausen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, I know we said we weren't going to have any uh, agenda changes, but it's okay. If, do we feel that we need to do the an executive session? I don't think so at this I don't point. Think, I don't I'm, think so, but I'm future, pretty satisfied with where we're at. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You can choose not to do an executive so, yeah, session yeah, any yeah. time you want. You want to, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to, right now, was so we can just go yeah. through the end of this without yeah. that lingering there. So. Yeah. I think we're all in agreement that we'll. So we're not in suspense. We'll, uh, <laughs> we're not in suspense. We're going to remove gonna the executive session from the agenda. So. Um, just while these gentlemen are here, I think, um, especially Tony, um, I think he's been, you know, he's he's been a huge part of this project um, from when issues were discovered through through this point. Uh, so I did want to say thank you to him for. For all that he has done, I know there's been many of these meetings where it felt like you were being probably attacked by us because of issues <laughs> going on. Um, but I personally enjoy everything and appreciate everything that you've done for us 
throughout this project and wanted to tell you thank you for that. So, uh, thank you. I think you're getting fired. Well said, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was hoping. <laughs> he said he could have done that a while ago. <laughs> if they're gonna do it. Not yet, Tony. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Nobody goes to school to be an ORC anymore. So. <laughs> a more years. Uh, so yeah. So thank you for that. Uh, the next item on the agenda is an administrator and staff reports. I didn't submit a report, but I do have one thing I wanted to bring up, and Chris Klassen and I talked about it earlier, uh, and I told him I was going to bring it up. He approached me and wanted to uh, do a little walk around the community or a drive around the community and point out some things that he was uh, concerned about, or um, I don't know, Chris, if you wanted to express that in a different way, that's fine. Um, but I, I did tell him that I wanted to at least throw it out to all of you to see if there's anybody else that might want to either tag along or uh, set up your own. Uh, I think we're, you know, as a staff, we're always willing to meet with you and, and discuss uh, concerns, but I kind of want to make sure it's out in the open. I uh, don't want to make anybody feel like uh, we're giving one uh, trustee attention over another. So I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. And we actually plan uh, to do that tomorrow afternoon, but if somebody wanted to join us, we could push that off on another time or, or uh, whatever, as long as we weren't uh, uh, gonna have a, uh, three of us at the same time. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, you said it perfectly. So I'm, I'm just gonna, since we're on the record, I'm okay uh, with myself or any trustee requesting this from our town administrator. Um, but as elected officials of this board, we are not a director of any employee in this town. Any issues that we have need to go through the proper chain of command. Um, we need to make sure it's, it's not our position to be out there nitpicking. You know, employee A is leaning on the shovel wrong, employee B is driving incorrectly. There are proper chains of command that we must follow on this board. So um, if you do want to do that with our town administrator or a department head, you need to go to the administrator first before you get that approval to go with the department head. And I would strongly suggest or recommend not to even do that with a department head. Um, I believe that's a line that's being crossed potentially if that is to happen. So uh, <clears throat> our attorney is here and I don't know if he wants to clarify anything no, that, that's in your charter. Sure. It, it says exactly, or more or less what you said, is that, uh, that you, yeah. you, you know, the chain of command is you supervise your, your town administrator, your town administrator works with department heads, uh, the department heads are the supervisors of the individual employees, and there really should never be a situation where one of you are out there telling an employee what to do. <laughs> What talk you, to him. If, if you have a concern, talk to the administrator. Yeah, and that's precisely why I asked, you know, the town administrator to go with me. Right. You know, just because, so, you know, obviously that's what the charter says. I can't, you know, say anything yeah. I don't you know, know to employees. Uh, Trustee Carlson's concerns, but wouldn't it be more practical for him to call it in as a citizen? Like, I see some bushes overgrown calling, hey, these bushes are blocking uh, traffic from seeing to get out, opposed to going, hey, let's go, let's go look, look around so I can show you things that annoy me. Isn't that pra more practical or is this? I, I, I think there is a way to approach things definitely as a citizen. Right. And then there are issues, circumstances in town that are board, more of a, a board position to a town administrator conversation that needs to happen. Right. Um, so I think and that's that that fine line of what's a board complaint and what's a citizen complaint. Right. Uh, I mean, I've, for the record, I've had citizen complaints before. I email our town administrator from my personal email account, not my town account, and I yeah. sign my emails, citizen Keith Reichel. Um, I don't send them from my mayor account and Mayor Reichel on the end of it because they're two different positions. Right. Um, I also would not email Trey directly just because I I do sit in this position so um, I, I I would assume that there's probably some 
issues maybe that Chris would like to discuss that are board related issues right. and not citizen related issues. Yeah. And then, you know, and I don't know how often, I know Jeff is extremely busy. I don't know how often he actually gets out and about just to drive around, you know, so that, that was one of my, my comments on, on the review of the town administrator and that's why I figured well okay I might as well take the initiative and say hey you want to you know drive around and just just check out the town okay on that point I remember when I first started at the board uh, we did a water plant visit as a board so we all just went in there and traveled around and uh, Trey explained the different points Jeff was present I find I found that to be very beneficial if the way uh, Trustee Clossing is putting as, okay, as trustee, if we can combine a time, maybe with a little more notice, I don't know, <laughs> like that the board can together go and have a general view of the town and choosing a specific spot, I see value in that, but to go in and just point specific problem, it could potentially not be bad, bad, best use of, you know, administrator and directors resources and time necessarily if you're just going in to point those problems i feel that especially if it's board decision to bring those in have a discussion and then address the issues so two folds but then doesn't that become a public meeting now that we have a board member and town administrator so the public gets invited no you have, to have three members of the board three members of the board okay. yeah. yeah so and three members of the board wanted to go tomorrow it would be open up to the public. And then you'd have to notice it as a public. So you have to have enough lead time to do that and everything else. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know that it would be practical to take the public on a driving tour. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I think I think <laughs> Trustee Poston hit it on the head. It, I think this is kind of up to Jeff if he feels like he has the time resources to do something like this. It's nice that the rest of the board was noticed, but I, there, there's nothing that prevents a board member and the town administrator from sitting down and talking or hey let's go take a look at this or that around town and I think it really he just you know if this if, if everyone wanted to take a drive and it was causing a problem with him to get his other work done he'd probably have to start saying no and since it hasn't happened in five years <laughs> I didn't think it was a big deal <laughs> yeah and, and many of you uh, bring up these points when we're here in these meetings, and that's totally appropriate. That's, you know, uh, you know that's okay, too. Um, but I'm willing to do it any, uh, you know, in multiple different ways. I mean, I, everybody has different styles of communication and uh, open to accommodating those. We went to the sealed preserve. Was that considered public meeting? That was a public meeting. Okay, no, that was a public meeting. meeting yeah. and so the water we plant. told everybody. We told the whole community where we were going to be. And the lettuce factory too, right? The lettuce that factory too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anytime we've done any of those. Look, field look at trips. all the field trips you get. Go on more. Field trips. Go on another one. What the heck? We can go to the closed lettuce factory. Now. <laughs> Thank you. See you, Toby. Open, yeah. Thanks, Toby. See you guys. Good night. Drive careful. Good night. Well, then I guess it, it just brings up a question, you know, like, you know, subcommittee m members, you know, like if you're on the park subcommittee, you know, and it's an issue of, oh, hey, I want horseshoe pits, you know, do you, can you go to the public works director about those questions or do you have to go to you just because I didn't know how that worked with the way the town's charter. Well, all of those things up. would generally come to me or through that committee. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I don't think anybody's going to go to Trey and say, "Build me a splash pad," you know, "Build yeah. me a," mm -hmm. we need a new sign on such and such. I mean, that's not it's not the way it's supposed to work. So, uh, yeah, that's why the charter's written. If you don't like the sign at uh, Stony Ridge, tell me about it, yeah, and yeah. Trey and I'll talk about it. I don't like to sign at Stony Ridge. That's why I bring it up. <laughs> I do think there's there there probably are reasons for a, a trustee to go. Mm -hmm. out in the town with the, the town administrator. Some things, you know, talking about a bush on 7th Street, it could be 100 times easier to take him to the bush and say this is mm -hmm. this is what's going on. It's the, the line crossing where, yeah. you know, you need to tell Public Works they have to take care of this bush. Right. Yeah. Well, just in, while we're talking about one of the examples, things like I've, as I've done it in my time on the board, 
is I try to, when if I notice something, I let Jeff know as soon as possible because that way it can get taken care of. Because if it's something I see, I notice that things are done, things be done. But what I've done is like an example was on Main Street, and this is years ago, it was like this fall fest or something, and the trees had grown enough that they were impeding walking down the thing. Well, instead of grabbing it, coming up here and being, hey, let's go look at the trees, I just took a picture. <laughs> Send Jeff an email. This is what the trees are looking like on Main Street. Do what you need to do with it. And then let him make his decision. He can direct who he needs to, and, his, and things get taken care of that way. This is the way I've always tried to do it. But and everybody is, like Jeff said, we all have our different communi- we all have our different communication styles and ways that work. And so as long as he doesn't have a problem with it and everything else goes, I guess it's... I would like a... I mean, if it's, I don't know about the rest of the board, if you guys go on this walking tour or whatever, just a, in your administrator report for the next month, just a, a quick blurb about what it, what it entailed. Happy to do that. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's basically, you know, drive around and say, well, you know, check this out, check that yeah. out. What do you see here? What do you think of this? You know, th- right. that sort of thing, because, I mean, I could be here for two hours at board comments and I don't think any of us want that so well, the meeting's going quicker than I thought tonight so <laughs> <laughs> Wait a time. Still don't know. it's late if, um, we shaved 20 minutes off of the executive session yeah <laughs> I, I would like to point out too that you can always use text my gov yep that's you know if you have a condition see a condition out there that you feel like it's uh, unsatisfactory every citizen is invited to use that app uh, we get those and we and we uh, respond to those cool. uh, right away. So well, I would ask Attorney Sawyer for some clarification on that. If I'm a citizen and I don't like a is is a city board member, I don't like the way a tree is hanging over the sidewalk. If I take a picture and send it to text my to gov, that's going straight to Trey. That's that's okay. That's that is the implemented strategy by you as a board that <clears throat> directs information at the appropriate level of government. Okay. You're just sending that as a citizen. I mean, when I think okay. when, you, when you get those trade, it doesn't say, it doesn't give you like a person that it came from or anything, does it? It just gives you a phone number. A phone number, but it's not. Yeah. yeah. Gives you a phone yeah. number, and if they send a picture, you can open the picture. You, you <laughs> yeah. And you may not want to do that for, you know, the tree that's right in front of your house that you'd be like, I want this tree replaced. You know? <laughs> uh, it's also not uh, assigning work. You're no. doing what every citizen is invited to do, and that's to mm-hmm. just make the town aware of certain things that are going on. Yep. Okay. Um, Trey always has the ability to say that's not it. That's not a priority. Yeah. You know. Okay. Especially since he doesn't know who it's coming from. <laughs> Perfect. And if he does know who it's coming from, he can come and talk to me, and we can, you know, jointly decide whether it's a priority or not, right. where it fits in. Okay. Any other staff updates? Trey's got nothing for us. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I got a quick question. It says here the check received for fifteen fifty-five. So that's the one from Holiday Inn. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it's been it, deposited. It's in the bank. Yep. Okay. And those guys are moving forward. Um, they, they've got one guy that's been here a lot, just you know, doing various things to get ready for that project. So because they only have ninety days to pull a permit. I. I yeah. After they've After closed. They closed. Yeah. So I assume we got a check. It's closed. So now they closed. they don't have a whole lot of time to get a project moving. That's a good point. Huh? Um, which I mean, it's 180 days. Mm-hmm. Which this is uh, 1555 River Frontage Road in front of the Holiday Inn Express. The lot uh, we sold. The proposed alternative. To, uh, yeah, they had some strict requirements on when they had to have a building permit pulled by. So. I'll check on that. Okay. All right. We'll jump to 
Any further questions for staff? Nope. Update from the boards and board comments? No, oh, I had one question okay, go for, ahead. for Trey. Um, the interchange paving. I see they're working on Newcastle. Hopefully we're next. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry. <coughs> it had, <laughs> well, it it's kind of comical on something else that deals with that. They sent us a schedule of when they thought they were going to start. They're going to try to do it at night like they did Newcastle. They ran into a couple issues. That schedule might change, so that's why we haven't put that schedule out because it looks like it's going to change. Um we're not sure of the date yet or when they're going to do it. So we're waiting for the updated schedule from CDOT. But it was projected to go in the next week or two. And then some issues came up and they're dealing with them. And we're waiting on the new timeline. Okay. I'm just, I'm going to be real unhappy if CDOT says, oh, the season's over. We don't have time for you guys. Oh, it's still, it's still on the schedule for them to get it done. Okay, good. You won't be the only one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And read the newsletter for those of you that wants to know how roads are determined. Right. Yeah. Well, how so we, that. which roads get done and how we do. <clears throat> and, yeah, I mean, on, on a side comment, it's interesting how, you know, because commuting to work, we go across the Newcastle one quite often, and those poles, they're always patched. They're always patched. <laughs> you know, down here, our bridge, nothing. We, we never get CDOT to, you know, we have two gigantic holes in that bridge. And CDOT, I don't know, they don't care, I guess, you know, because they never come by and they never, they never pave it. You know, I've even had people like, go stick a tree in one of the holes and take a picture and put it on Facebook. Then that'll get, you know, CDOT's attention, you know. <laughs> but for some reason, Newcastle's bridge, you know, they would always get, get their bridge patched and we get nothing. Well, and is CDOT doing that, or is Newcastle sending their public works out to patch a CDOT bridge? That's true. I mean, it, it could be, but it's it's that, that same material that you see CDOT oh, use. Okay. So that's why I'm I'm making the assumption it's CDOT. And, yes, you, you're, you're correct. It, it could be Newcastle. I think the last time was Newcastle was out there. They were out there. Their Newcastle trucks and stuff were all doing the last one. Gotcha. That's worth us asking the question. Yeah, but hopefully by the end of the month, it's new pavement on that thing. Cool. All right. Thank you. Yep. Okay, board comments. Back to Chris. I have none. Thank you, uh, town staff, for all the hard work you've done on this, this water plant and everything. And and that's all I have tonight. All right. Trusty Seifert. Well, we got over a big threshold. We didn't kill each other, so really happy with that one. We got along, and everything's going good. So, thanks, staff, and everybody's done a lot of work for this. So, move on. All right, Mayor Pro Tem. Just gratitude for all the hard work. I've been, I think, physically sick a little bit this weekend thinking about this conversation and having to make this decision. It hasn't been easy for me, and I can imagine it's been much harder for everybody else who had to do the actual work. Yeah. So I appreciate it. And again, knowing how I felt, I'm sure you all have been getting ulcers alongside us here at this table for the last year plus. So I'll just share my thanks. That's it. Same here. It's just... Um, all the extensive work and everything that has been put <clears throat> in front of us has been gradually um, good in the sense that it's allowing us to make, have good discussions and make forward step decisions. Um, and we are seeing some strides there. So um, let's keep moving forward and bringing out our thoughts and ideas and um, hopefully this project will be something that can be approved and we'll see it happening soon. And I'd like, yeah, I'd like to echo the thank you too for the staff for this project that's happening and in particular, Tony and the water and wastewater since the staff turned over, the problem came to light and it's getting solved and it's getting solved rapidly. And so yeah, thank you guys, thank the new staff over there that, for all the hard work. Trustee Brittman? 
Um, just like to thank uh, Amy for coming in today, Godwin for coming in and bringing some stuff that she has concerns, some things she saw that want to make our town better. Invite any of the citizens to do that. Um, obviously, you don't have to wait till the board meeting. Even come in, talk to the town administrator, talk to the town staff, let them know they'll get it forward to the right people, and we can work on things just to make the town. Because it's as the mayor says all the time, it's our town, and we're all responsible. And we all have the, the ability to do things to make a difference. I got nothing. You guys all did the thank you to the town staff, and uh, that's it. Next item on the agenda is adjournment. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Trustee Seifert to adjourn the meeting. Second by Trustee Brittenall. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> motion carries unanimously. Okay.